War had raged through all Aventasia. The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the Shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of divine fate. The artifact could fulfill every wish, and thus decide the war, for one side or the other. Led by warlock Munkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against them. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven princess from the Woodland Realm. And the Critter, a hairy creature from the Northlands, companion of the most brilliant of the heroes. Nate Bonnet, who was supposed to spend the rest of his life at the side of an elven princess who deserved a kingdom and all the riches in the world, who should stop wasting time talking about himself in the third person. Ah! Good, good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer! Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. Nate, how's it going? Good. For now. Could it be that your spell didn't quite work out the way you planned? I did tell you there were certain risks involved. Risks? What risks? Now, gin magic is a complicated affair. It's difficult to get the dose right, and when one hasn't done magic for a while, things can go a little bit wrong. Like you killing me, for example? Not... Uh, not intentionally. No big thing. So, now that we have a little time to kill, why don't you tell me a little something about yourself? Oh, right. Well, um, yes, I came into this world in an oasis in the Umzu Desert, and at that time, I was... Are you out of your ever-loving mind? Definitely not the time to reminisce. Then why did you ask? I could use some help here, Benny. Well, you did see what happened last time I cast the spell. Time to make up for it, then. Now shake a leg. Oh, I don't know. I might just end up making everything worse. Let me see. I'm accompanying tons of boulders in a plummet to certain painful death. My death. So just how do you think you could make things any worse? Worse? I could set the air on fire, or it could start smelling very bad. Can't you just stop time? Or wings! Give me wings! How about that? Oh, this is all terribly complicated. I really don't feel up to it today, Nate. Benny! Perhaps tomorrow? I really do need to think through what's happened today properly. You get me out of the mess you got us into right now! Please don't yell at me! I just can't take it anymore! 
Benny! Ah! The state he's in, we can forget about miracles. I gotta find something easy, something even he thinks he can do. A flying carpet! Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Ugh. I'm sorry I criticized your work, Benny. And? And? And... That I shook your lamp. And everything else. You meant well. Well, all right then. I forgive you. What can I do for you? Carpet! Hmm. A flying carpet. Shouldn't be too hard. Should I really dare? Am I really up to it? Yes! What the heck? What happened here? No! Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. To move a character, just click anywhere in the scene, wherever your heart desires. Well done. If you left-click an object, then your character will perform an action determined by the context. Now click on that big lever. Robot has used the lever, as this seemed logical to him. Now click the lever with your right mouse button so that the robot looks at it rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That hatch over there, left click it. The little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Click on the hatch again using the left mouse button. The first left click will allow you to look, the second to use. Why? Because after a player character has looked at something, the most logical thing to do next is use it. It's quite simple. Right click when you want to look at something, left click in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Left click on the lever. Appears to be a new problem. Better take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gear cogs. Great work! Items you pick up will go into your inventory. To open and close your inventory, left-click the rucksack. To use an inventory item, 
left-click it and then left-click the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now the second gear. Perfect. You better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then when you are in the inventory, right-click the toolbox in order to examine it. Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially left-clicking the first object, and then, when you have this item on the cursor, you left-click the second object. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done! Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony of the castle and start the machine. Now ready. One last tip before that's ready. If you press the spacebar, all interesting objects in the scene will be displayed. Good luck with your adventures in the Book of Unwritten Tales 2. I'm worried about you. Oh, Mother. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No, you don't look well at all. Positively, rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming and... Look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the Elf Kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivo. Have you seen this, Prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love? Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. 
Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. Ugh. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought... perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. I've been sleeping badly of late, and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. A guard with a spear and shield, and like all elven figures, immaculate. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room. And then it's replaced and planted in the garden. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. <sighs> Complete idiot. Cheap Cheap survived our past adventure, even if he'll insist on exactly the opposite. He told everyone for months how he defended me from all the evils of the world and then only just escaped with his tail feathers intact. Hey, Cheap. Most birds love a mirror because they believe they can see another bird in it. You just love them because you can't get enough of yourself. I would be a bit less unbearable if I wasn't incarcerated in here. And you really think it's appropriate for me to be locked in here too, eh? Yes, only what's best for me. She always says that. 
Why does everyone else know what's best for me and not me? See you later. Yes, of course I'll be a good girl and stay in my room. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but sunflowers are my favourite. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. I've seen much suffering, much evil and unkindness in the world out there, but it was exciting. It was alive. Here in the Elf Burrow, everything is so ordered, so perfect, so dull. One day's just like the next, and they just pass by endlessly. One can almost see the edge of the wood through the telescope, but I just can't leave the Elf Burrow. Mother would never forgive me, and there are so many dangers lurking out there. Many don't believe that Archmage Alistair and I managed to hide the artifact of Divine Fate so well that no one would ever be able to find it including us. They believe we kept it for ourselves. Hardly anyone understood that there are some things so powerful they should not be used. Hmm, a delicate sweet scent. It reminds me of a wood over in the west, where I learnt to use a bow and arrow. Hmm, a delicate... Normally this bowl is... No. Elven craft. Only when everything is always perfect, then isn't everything always the same and somehow... The guard with a spear and sh... Elven craftsmen have centuries to perfect their artistic skills. Only when everything is always perfect, then isn't everything always the same and somehow... Unimportant? When Nate and the others lived here, Nate often made intimations that were to do with the bed. I don't know why, but I know Mother wasn't happy about it. She moved him to a guarded guest room at the other end of the castle. And Cheap Cheap was ordered never to leave my side. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the Elf Burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride. Could you please move aside? I want to get into my jewellery box. Hmm, he doesn't listen to me anymore, since I almost caused him to be roasted by fireballs, decapitated by swords and eaten by monsters. Mother has permitted him to disregard any of my orders that go against her wishes. His interpretation of this can be liberal. Shameless abuse of power. Cheap! The box! Please! Oh. Cheap Cheap likes to look at his... He strikes a pose and then tries to impress himself with it, and succeeds most of the time. Hey Cheap Cheap, I need the mirror. I only need it for a minute. 
Oh, he's not budging, and his pecs can be damn painful when he puts his mind to it. Hey, Cheep Cheep, I need... I only need it for a minute. Oh, he's not budging, and his pecs can be... Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. Cheep Cheep, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead? Don't say I never look after you. Precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. All the stuff I have to wear at official functions. If it were up to Mother, I would have trunkfuls of this stuff, and a wing of the castle would be my wardrobe. She just can't understand why Pa and I aren't into this sort of thing. Pearls, good... Mother's locked me in, as if I was 200 again. Since I secretly escaped from the elf burrow last year, she's taken to guarding me closer than ever before. The door's locked and can only be opened from the other side. I'll have to find another way down to the library. Hopefully I'll find a book on medicine in the library. Only how am I going to get down there? The door's locked and... Withdrawal symptoms? I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. and he's simply... no matter. I can now enjoy a few moments of peace. And that's the sound of Cheep Cheep snoring. He's a bit special like that. I hope he'll sleep a while longer. He's going to make a scene as soon as he wakes up. And that's the
I'm going to have to take a few more of your seeds, but I promise this is the last time. Precious goodness. Fresh water from people. Hmm, a delicate. I hope he'll sleep a while long. Let's go. As expected, no one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands. Or rather, mother is. There are reeds and water lilies growing in the pond. Naturally, they were planted there. They don't grow in the wild so high up the mountains. I can't think of any use for a water lily, but a reed could come in handy. There's only a little water left in the bird bath. Cheap Cheap always says that it evaporates quickly. I, however, think that the constant need to replenish the water is more down to his unbridled joyous splashing and not insignificant body mass. There's only a little water. I, however, know much about reeds or pipes, but if I'm not mistaken, then those things are called pipe cleaners. A fairly small, unattractive tree. Huh. I'd like to see how attractive you'd look if someone disturbed you on the pot in the morning. You mean... Anyway, what can I do for you, my little beauty? The garden always looks fantastic, Arthur. Thank you. It's a girt load of work. People always think elf gardens are fabulous by their very nature. But you need a mighty good gardener. You have got green fingers. Ah, that's just moss, my dear. Happens if you spend all day grubbing around in the earth and don't wash your hands properly in the evenings. You tree shepherds do a great job. <laughs> tree shepherds? The trees just stand there. What do they need a shepherd? However, I quite fancy one of those shepherd dogs. Hey, Rex, do you want to be my shepherd dog? <laughs> nah, my darling. I'm a gardener. Nothing more, nothing less. What are you up to today, then? Got much on? Oh, the usual. You know, it never rains in the elf burrow, but the flowers need their water. So I water them every day. Ah, oh, the curse of good weather. <laughs> the weather isn't the only thing which isn't right. We've been here 30 years, and for 30 years we've had autumn. Time passes differently in the Elf Burrow. Slower. 
Well, that's why everyone grows to be ancient here, obviously. But if we had a bit of normal weather in the usual seasons, oh, there'd be a lot more of a riot here. Mother doesn't like bad weather. <laughs> There's no such thing as bad weather. Ask your father, he knows. You and father, you get along well, don't you? Ah, no one understands more about nature than him, that's for sure. But I don't often ask him for help. Thinking has never got a feel, Doug, if you get my drift. He's just more of a theorist. Ah, the mud on your feet, the smell of fresh earth, all that joy and life. And he's missing out on the lot by just sitting around up there and doing nubbit. Mother told me he used to go for long journeys through the woods and strange lands, and now he's just thinking them over. He has been for the last few hundred years. Ah, won't be long before he comes to some conclusion then. Mother put me on a diet this morning so that I'll look perfect for my wedding. Well, everything has to be perfect for her. No such thing in nature, of course. Or rather, everything is perfect if you just let nature run its course. You tell that to Mother. I have, many times. She'd be very clever in some things, but very daft concerning that. Now then, she is the Queen. I'm old enough to be able to call a spade a spade. <laughs> spade, gardener, get it? I have to get on. Yep, got a bit to do myself. I just don't know what's wrong with that plan over there. Your mother got a whole heap of flowers given to her the other day from a fairy delegation. All of them took good and strong, just not that one. Perhaps it needs a special type of soil or something. Well, anything's possible. If I don't think of something soon, I'll have to ask your father. He can have a little chat with her and she might tell him what's up. Um, if you're going in, it'd be nice if you didn't tell my mother that you saw me out here. Oh, you playing hooky again? My lips are sealed. I don't know the names of all the plants in the garden. Grandmother knows them all, which is probably down to the fact that it was her that gave many of the plants their names a few thousand years ago. Shite beerwood, sweat tea, dodder flower, fat hen, bistort, stink root. Mm. We no longer invite her to family gatherings. No idea what kind of bush this is, but its red fruit looks very yummy. If I learnt one thing in the woods, it's that you shouldn't eat anything you don't know, regardless of how yummy it looks. No idea what kind of... If I... It doesn't look very well at all. It's unusual for flowers to hang their heads in this garden. Normally they blossom in our good earth, not to mention the power of Arbor's green fingers. If Arbor doesn't know what's wrong with the plant, then it's serious. Mother thought it was unseemly of the bees to build their hive in our garden. I don't think she could get used to the thought that she would no longer be the only queen here. I convinced Mother not to have the hive removed, and she reluctantly agreed. However, should she be stung, then the hive's days are numbered. The bees are buzzing around the hive quite merrily. Anyone messing with them will know about it fast. I convinced Mother not how This is Mother's mirror. It's said that you can see into the furthest corners of the land and know what's happening in every part of the world. At the moment, it's no more than a shallow bowl. The water's missing. Mother pours water from various jugs into this bowl to cast a spell over the mirror. She did this almost daily in times gone by to ask the mirror who was the fairest elf in all the lands. Ever since the mirror started to hesitate with the answer a few months ago, she hasn't been using it quite so much. This is Mother's mirror. At the moment. A handy smooth stone, Arbor's sheep dog.
That's a weeping willow. It appears to be so content it looks anything but sad. The willow is stretching its branches up high into the sky with glee. One part of the waterfall's already lying in its shadow. If it continues to grow like that, it'll shade half the garden. That's a weeping willow. That leads up to the throne room. Mother will be conducting the affairs of state with an iron will, whilst Pa leaves against the tree of life, probably sleeping. I'm not going up there. I've no appetite for discussions with Mother. A great example of the variety of our world's fauna. Some of the ideas Mother Nature has can be quite off the wall. Sometimes it's difficult to believe that some creatures in our world have developed naturally. They look as if some bored artist has dreamt them up. A few years ago, this dragon was causing a whole lot of grief. A bounty was put on its head and all heroes of the land were encouraged to hunt it down. Forty brave warriors penetrated its lair and slew it. They brought the head to the palace where it was displayed in triumph. The strange thing was that a bit later more adventurers came carrying an identical head. Then more and more heroes arrived. A few years ago this fought the The door can be opened easily from the outside. If it was up to me, it would stay open. The Biggest Plant Book of Aventasia by Charles Mendel with illustrations by Alexander Bonpland. A standard reference book that Arbor always used to consult every now and then. However, he insists that he now knows it off by heart. This flower clearly is one of the more exotic of the palace's flowers. It comes from a country in the deep south beyond the deserts. It's said that the flower of this plant used to be sent as a declaration of war, or if one wanted to deprive someone of all sense. Why do so many people hate this flower? Perhaps it has an abhorrent smell. Now that explains why this flower is classified as a weapon in 24 countries. Swords of all the idiots who have tried to conquer the elf borrow. It's become less frequent over the last few centuries. Humans and dwarves appear to have learnt their lesson. It's said that a ruler in the north wanted to build himself a throne out of all the swords of conquered enemies. Unfortunately, he died after only conquering one enemy when he refused to heed all the warnings and sat on the throne. There's a selection of cubes here. For a while, it was all the rage at official state visits to give geometric presents. Each cube is significant and comes from a different country, but I never really paid much attention. Goldsmithing, masonry, and a book about carpentry. Like all books in this library, it's a guest present. The logic behind this must be those elves, they have so many beautiful statues and items of wood. They'll be really interested in this. Why don't we present them with a book about it? What they don't realise, though, is that if we're interested in a subject, then we'll already know pretty much all there is to know about the matter, and the books of no use to us whatsoever. 
several books about animals, an atlas, a book about humans, actually more of a brochure. And what's this? Fishing for the moderately talented. Hmm. I haven't really got the time to sit and read a book, and if I had, it would definitely not be one about fishing. There must be a medical book for elves here somewhere. Working with wood. There's a master whittler down in the valley. I've enjoyed watching him in the past. He carves animal figures so real that humans and dwarfs believe that they are actually animals turned into wood. This one's more about interiors, making furniture and the like. Plane the wood down by a pixie's thumb and saw the board into two equal length pieces. Hmm, who knows what that might be good for. present from one of the northern kingdoms. Strange folk up there. The men climb mountains and shout foul-mouthed things in dragon's language at the dragons. I think it's some kind of test of courage. Helmets with horns. Cool, but useless. Perhaps I can help Arba solve the problem with that flower. Let's take a look. This plant reminds me of the one that Arba's having problems with at the moment. Love Lily. The Love Lily enters into an enduring relationship with another plant very early in its life, which frequently lasts its lifetime. If the partner plant dies, then the Love Lily does not normally survive the separation. Hmm, this plant reminds Love the if the Mandrake should only be cultivated by experienced gardeners. The cry of the baby mandrake can kill anyone within 20 metres instantaneously. The wood of intelligent apple trees is often used for the equally intelligent and beautifully shaped living accessories of all types. For a long time, botanists thought that it may be possible to find other intelligent fruit varieties. So far, the search has proved fruitless. Guard plants, Vigilia audriensis, belong to the oldest domesticated plants of humankind. They have been especially valued in times of famine as they do not require as much food as, for instance, dogs. They can sometimes develop an unhealthy taste for blood. Huh, <laughs> baritones. Steel magnolias look like normal magnolias, but are some of the toughest plants on earth. They can be softened using tragic women's stories and subsequently may be picked. The Tree of Wrath bears fruit several times a year. These Grapes of Wrath are bad-tempered beasts that can lay whole areas to rack and ruin. Killer tomatoes are the most devious of the meat-eating plants. Disguised as tomatoes, they hunt on allotments for defenceless humans. Giant beans, also known as magic beans, are very rare. They are the fastest-growing plant variety known. Because of the bean's high costs, they are almost exclusively used by the military, for instance, in storming high-walled castles. What have we got here then? Aha! Ah, ah! Almanac of Elf Medicine! That's what I've been looking for. Ow! Be careful, if you please. A speaking book? An ill elf? Ill elf? So I look ill. What's wrong with me? Take it easy, young one, one thing at a time. Young one, I'm older than you. And you look it too. I do? No, of course not, and I can also see no illness. But the mere fact that I've been fished out from the back of the shelf for the first time in centuries tells me that something is wrong. 
feeling too well recently. I'm sleeping badly and have no appetite. I know that elves are very seldom ill, but if it's not that, then it must be some kind of magic or curse. Hmm, seldom ill does not actually mean never ill. Elves can, for instance, suffer from a broken heart. Oh, please. It is one of the most common causes of death amongst beautiful princesses. Oh, it must be something else. Sensitive elves can sometimes suffer from the pains of the world. There are a variety of ear infections, and of course it could also be lupus. Hmm. But I think it is something else. Like what? To be completely certain, you must mix a potion and drink it. Are you serious? Very. Are you actually qualified to make a diagnosis? And why can you talk? I am a magical medicine book. That actually serves as an answer to both of your questions. I've never encountered a talking book before. Of course not. I am the only talking book here. That's the problem. In the magical library in Seastone, all books can talk. Things really get cooking there, believe me. Here, the books just laze around, standing on the shelves. And if you talk to them, they pretend they haven't heard you. You were probably given to us by someone from Seastone, right? Right. I was a complete idiot and actually volunteered. As I am a book about elf medicine, I didn't get much to do in Seastone. I thought to myself, hey, this is your chance to get some practical experience. Wrong. Yeah, we elves don't get ill much. And more than that, you don't actually have much time for books. This is the centre of the elven kingdom, and just look at how paltry this library is. We don't have much use for books. We sing songs about times past, and many of us were there at the time. Then that's probably also the reason why so many elves stand around in white. What do you mean? Allow me to elucidate. Over the years, the songs you elves sing will be changed and adapted. A little here, a little there. This editorial process is nothing more than refined elvish propaganda, presenting them as intelligent and morally impeccable. And who can prove otherwise? There are no other witnesses and there are no books. I demand to know this instant what sort of illness I have. Sometimes it's better not to know. I can take it. A placebo only works when one doesn't know that it is a placebo. And some illnesses can be best fought when one doesn't let oneself be intimidated or confused by them. Make the potion and then come back and drink it. Then we'll be sure. And if it's lupus? Have you been bitten by a wolf of late? No. Then it can't be lupus. No, I'm pretty sure it's something else. Now, that potion, drink it, and then I can tell you more. All right, this potion, what goes in it? It is very easy to make. You need to pound together the green fruit of a metis bush, a spoonful of honey and a red herring, and then mix with water into a viscous potion. Oh, that sounds revolting. It's medicine. It isn't supposed to taste nice. And if I drink it, I'll be well again? We will then at least know what is wrong with you. This metis bush, where can I find one? Haven't a clue. I'm just a book and have spent years sandwiched between dusty hymnals and a tome of revolting recipes. A red herring? Are you serious? Of course, why not? Red herrings are known all over the land as particularly useful fish. Their uses in the areas of medicine, cuisine and literature are too numerous to mention. All right, so I've got a red herring. Thank you. I think that's all for now. Normally, it's me that ends patient consultations. You are only a princess, but I, I am a doctor.
As suspected, there are red herrings swimming in the pond. They are really saltwater fish that live in the sea. But they always come back to their homeland to breed. They're the only known fish variety that can scale nearly vertical cliffs. Red herrings are fast and slippery. Even elves can't catch them with their bare hands. Red herrings are fast and slippery. If it were possible to hit fish with stones, who'd need a rod? Perhaps there are a few practical hints and tips in the fishing book. A lucrative season with a successful technique doesn't just depend on the type and quality of your tackle, but also on a really good spot. It doesn't matter whether you jig, dip, toddle or feed. Wobblers, twisters, spinners, blinkers, poppers, jigs, jerks and live bait must be presented in the most enticing ways possible. I haven't the faintest idea what all that means. I presume my fishing talents are not quite advanced enough to enable me to use this book. Arbor's pot, literally. No idea what kind of bush this is, but its red fruit looks like if I Hi Arbor. Oh, Ivo. I think I know the name of your patient. It's a love lily. Mm. You don't look particularly loved up. That's exactly the problem. Love lilies enter into a lifelong partnership with another plant. And if they're separated... Then they let their heads droop. Mm, good theory. But the fairies know their plants. They'd never have given us a love lily without its partner. Huh. Look, I found this book in the library. Woodcrafts? Why are you showing me that? I thought it might interest you. I don't like horror stories. Horror stories? Wood that has been clamped into a revolving monstrosity to be whittled down layer by layer to the core? What do you call that then? Sorry, never looked at it like that. Branches sawed off, boards nailed together, wood treated with chemicals. Oh, sick stuff. Oops, <laughs> didn't mean to unsettle you. That kind of thing can really get you down. If I were ill and needed to make some medicine, then you'd help me with that, wouldn't you? Ill? You're an elf! Elves don't get ill! But if I were... <sighs> oh, come on. Now tell me. How can I help you? Do we have a metis bush in the garden here? Or that bush over yonder. But that fruit's red. And what colour do you expect, then? Green. Are they only green when they're not ripe? Nah, they're blue, then. They're green when the bush senses danger. Pardon? The Metis bush has exceptionally delicious sweet fruit. But if it thinks it's in danger, then they go green and very sour. Call it a defence mechanism. Ah, and the bush only has red fruit because it has nothing to be afraid of here. Ah, that's right. Do you know how I could get my hands on some honey? Try the kitchens? I prefer not to wander through the castle. Ah, of course. Someone would tell your mother. Would that beehive in the tree over there be of any help? Oh, I'd be careful with that. The bees defend their honey and can give you a nasty sting. Couldn't they be distracted or tricked in some way? Beekeepers wear protective clothes and use smoke that calms the bees. But I don't have any beekeeper kit here. I just let the bees keep their honey and they pollinate my flowers. That's how we've always done it. I often see you fishing. Could you lend me your rod? Of course, if you bring it back in one piece.
What's up? I was convinced that I would have to make my own fishing rod or that you'd ask me to collect a variety of mystical items in exchange for it. Oi, it's only a rod. Thanks. Not everything needs to be complicated, you know. There's something else. About the potion. Art. There's something else. See you later. See ya. If the bush had a heart, it would have skipped a few beats. Thanks. I don't have a clue about fishing, but I'll try my luck. Just as I expected, nothing. On the other hand, somehow I have the feeling that I now know what I'm doing. I guess that I can just practice until I'm good enough. I could try to speed things up by learning more about fishing elsewhere. No, I need a bit more practical experience in fishing before the book will help me. A classic. A classic. A classic. Perhaps I have enough knowledge to now understand the book. Mm-hmm, 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 right, right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Aha, oh, twice in a row, then, mm-hmm, mm. Mm, that was educational. Take the red herring off my list. I really shouldn't. Ugh, it's only Earth. I should tell Mother how her daughter. Ugh, well, she'd be delighted. The worms provide a great lure and should increase my fishing success rate, whatever that is. 
I always hang one onto the hook before I cast the line out. Isn't there a turn of phrase like stirring up a bee's nest? I think the saying's trying to give us a warning. As long as the bees are wide awake and buzzing, I don't dare. I have to find the love lily's companion. The fairies would have known that it wouldn't have been able to survive without its partner. A lovely spot, so long as the bees who have built their hive directly above the bench don't disturb you. The willow is stretching its bright one part. Arbor. Oh! See you later. See you. Mother pours water from various jugs into this bowl. She did ever. This flower was given to us by the fairies, just like the love lily down in the garden. I bet they belong together. I could use the bowl to prepare the medicine in. A spoonful of honey, the green fruit from the metis bush, a red herring and a little water. Crush and blend until a viscous potion is created. Oh, sounds revolting. Oh, that fruit smells really sour. Thanks for the sacrifice, little fish. Water's the easiest ingredient to find. We have copious amounts of it here. Water's the easiest... That should do it. The medicine book reckoned that it should be a viscous potion. Do you know this flower? Ha ha ha! You did well, girl. It would appear so. You snivelling girl. You alright? Um, no. 
yes. I don't know. Well then, I think I've earned myself a little rest now. That's Arba's little spade. He always leaves his stuff all over the garden, which of course drives Mother mad. The smoke from Arba's pipe seems to be calming the bees. This is my chance. Hey now, you all right there? Um, sorry, had to do it. Although I'm not happy about this destruction of nature. Not unless I get half of that there honey. I don't need any more. The rest is for you. Mm. Oh, that be good stuff. But that's enough. The bees need a bit too. about one spoon of honey. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that there's never been anything so utterly revolting concocted in the elf burrow ever. Oh, I hope this is some kind of joke. I don't know much, but I do know that I'm not going to drink this potion until I've had another chat to the medicine book about it. I need to know which disease this potion's meant to be good for. Looks as if it's been pre-digested several times. Hi. Well, what's up? The potion's ready, but you don't seriously expect me to drink it, do you? You must. Cheap, I'm so... Yes, I know, but... This, um, <clears throat> medicine. Well, I did tell you that I wasn't feeling well, and the medicine book here thinks it could be something serious. She has to drink it, the sour metas fruit, sweet honey and salty fish. That should give us an answer. Oh, it looks revolting. It is medicine. It's not supposed to taste nice. That's right. Down to the last drop. Hmm. Not as bad as I was expecting. In actual fact, it's quite tasty. I could definitely drink another glass of that. Congratulations, Ivo. You are pregnant. No, 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 no. That is completely impossible. You must be wrong. Surely it's a misdiagnosis. You are an elf and say that potion is quite tasty. I could definitely drink another glass of that. That's raging hormones talking. I don't have any hormones. I... Cheap, no. No, the book has made a mistake. Cheap. 
I cannot be pregnant. I've never stood in the divine water with Nate on Midsummer's Night singing the Song of Life. Why? How do humans do it? They do what? Elves and humans can have children together, but it's not possible without sex. You see, we never had sex. At least not to my knowledge. But the diagnosis is crystal clear. Pregnant? Oh, shit. Let's just pretend that I am pregnant. There must be some explanation, rational or otherwise. If we discount the possibility that the child was conceived by natural means, which would certainly appear to be the case here, then that leaves us with just the unconventional conception methods. Did you, perhaps, make some kind of pact with a goblin regarding the child? Child in exchange for gold or a kingdom, for example? No. Has a god in the guise of a bull appeared to you in your dreams? Any angels been having a word with you? No. Have any stars fallen from the heavens recently? No, not that I'm aware of. Hmm. Then that just leaves magic, or a curse. But unfortunately, that is not my area of expertise. I wish it was so cheap, but my feeling is that the book is right. I am pregnant. One thing's certain, Mother must never find out about this. I don't know either. Do you think that my tummy will start to show? Oh. You're right. This'll be the crown prince or princess. We'll never keep it a secret. I'm not sure how, and I'm not sure why, but it would appear that I'm pregnant. And as all other possibilities have been eliminated, then it must be a curse that's responsible. That is fantastic! No, no, of course I didn't mean it like that. But just think. Me. Cursed. That sounds like an adventure. Totally obvious what we need to do now. We ask Archmage Alistair. He's the wisest magician in the realm of man, and he's a friend. He'll be able to tell us what it means. Oh, no, you don't. You remember who was meant to be looking after me so that nothing happens to me, don't you? <whistles> Alistair's sure to have the answers. We'll have to track him down in the Mage Tower in Seastone. Only, how are we going to get there? Seastone is days away from here. Oh, yeah, saying fly is all well and good. Are you going to teach me quickly, then? No, we need a fast mode of transport. And then there's the small matter of the border watch. Their longbows can take out a fly's eye at 400 metres. And they will shoot if said fly should dare to set foot in or leave the woodland realm without permission. Unless, of course, you know the password. You don't by any chance know the password that the border watch use? Typical. Ever since I left the elf burrow without permission, the guards have been given orders to treat me like any other elf. That means I get turned away from the border unless I know the password. That's exactly the problem. Mother chooses a new password every single day, and there's no way I'll get it out of her. Oh, why don't you know the password? You normally know everything. Hey, know it all. Mother's mirror. It knows more than you. It must know the password. True, it'll probably know why I'm pregnant too. But I'd still prefer to go to Seastone and get Alistair's advice. If we work as a team, we should be able to cast a little light on the matter, Chief. 
With a bit of luck, she'll never find out. Or the Archmage can make it clear to Mother that we haven't done anything wrong. After all, if it is a curse, then I'm the victim, not the perpetrator. Well, yes, I know that. She'll blame us whatever happens. But it's best for us to have some answers rather than just presenting her the facts, don't you think? Fantastic. Transport and the password. Let's go. An all-knowing mirror. In the current situation, that would be more than useful. The only question is how to cast a spell over the mirror. I've never done that before. Hmm, there are three symbols on the bottom of the bowl. I wonder what they mean. Each symbol depicts a droplet. Sometimes there's a line underneath it, sometimes above, and here is a circle going through the droplet. Haven't got a clue what they mean. I have seen these symbols once before, up in the throne room if I'm not mistaken. Each symbol depicts a drop- haven't got a cl I have- <sighs> Nothing for it. Have to talk to Pa. Ivo, I thought that we'd agreed that you would stay in your room. I just left my room to do a bit of training. Mm-hmm. You said yourself I've put on a few pounds, and I'm not going to get rid of them by lying around on my bed all day. Where does this sudden insight come from? I can't keep asking myself what to do with my life. Perhaps marriage isn't such a bad idea. It most certainly isn't. And if you train diligently, I'm sure Prince Lalilos will like you a lot. Of course. Fine. We should also do your hair, and I'll lend you one of my elegant gowns, if you can at least wear it properly. Yes! Great! I'll be off then. A training! I would love to help you, but I'm most dreadfully busy. A kind of epidemic seems to have broken out in Seastone. An epidemic in Seastone? It's strange. We're getting reports from the whole of the Middle Kingdom. Objects and beings have been... changed. What do you mean? The situation isn't clear. It appears as if some kind of terrible power is gradually moving through the whole land, changing it. Do you remember the story of the Nothing? A big blackness that gradually swallowed a fairy kingdom bit by bit. Of course. This time it is much worse. It is... pink. An epidemic in Seastone. Is it wise for me... and it... to go there? On the other hand, Wilbur and the Archmajor in Seastone. Perhaps I can help them to fight the epidemic in exchange for them helping me with my problem. Pa doesn't like getting up early. He always says he needs lots of sleep, but he's never said why. Hey, Pa, the day started ages ago. <clears throat> what? Oh, Ivo, how's my favourite daughter? I'm your only... Oh, that I had a hundred. You are and will remain something very special. The other ninety-nine would be as well, though. <laughs> pa, you're nuts. Isn't it a wonderful day today? Again. Just as the caterpillars cough in the morning dew. Yet... Something seems to be troubling you.
Enlighten me, father. Old people with sunburn, deep in prayer, anger the humorless gods. Mm, understood. She locked me up like a small child. Who? Mother. Have you argued again? She started it. She loves you. And she only wants the best for me. Mm, yes, she does. Even if you might not see it. How can it be best for me if she constantly criticises me and forces me to do things that I don't want to do? She believes that this will help prepare you for the life that awaits you. I'd just like to decide for myself. I know. Your mother just doesn't understand that, because she never had that choice. You are always defending her. Doesn't she drive you mad, too? Naturally. Then why don't you tell her? Does the GNU talk of spring when the shadows are tickling the squirrel? Uh. I love her. It's just a phase. She'll change. Are you sure? I haven't noticed anything over the last few hundred years. And if she doesn't change, then I will not love her any less. I love you both as you are, warts and all. Hmm? Mother wants me to marry this Prince Lalilos. Uh, I did hear about that. Is that your wish too? All I wish for is for you to be happy. Aha, so I'm not going to marry him. Unfortunately, um, not all wishes are granted. Oh. You are an elf princess. You will need to marry sooner or later. It's just when and who. I'd rather just leave that to Mother Nature. I wish you could convince Mother of that. I fear her faith in your taste of men has been shaken a little since... Well, you know, she wants to prevent your heart being broken again. That's why she's choosing someone that she thinks is right for you. Pa, would you have used the artifact of Divine Fate, or would you have hidden it like we did? I think that too much power can corrupt any one of us. But you have great powers, and you've never used them for evil. I could have cured diseased woodlands with the artifact, cleaned rivers in the air, and then what? Then I might have chased away the lumberjacks and destroyed the factories of the dwarves. A lot of bad things can come from good intentions. But I could have helped a lot of humans. Even Wilbur and Nate sometimes gave me that look when we were walking through destroyed cities and saw the streams of refugees. Things take time, Ivo. If you force change before its time has come, then it won't last. I... Uh, I need to tell you something, Father, but I'm not sure how. You shouldn't worry too much. It's not good for the baby. You know. Has a zebra got stripes? How could it have happened? Why? I don't know. Is that important? It is. I want to know what's happened to me. Then look for the answers, my little bud. How can you be so calm about it? Because I know that everything will be fine in the end. And if it isn't fine? Then it is not the end. If you don't know what the pregnancy's all about, then I'll have to travel to Seastone and ask the Archmage. The fact that I don't know means that you did not get pregnant by natural means. And if something does not conform to the laws of nature, then it must be magic. No one knows more about these things than Alistair. We agree, then. Like snails munching cabbage. Only... Your mother isn't going to permit it. I know, but I'll work on that. Enlighten me, father. 
evil smelling Murlocs, laughing madly and turning quickly in circles. They may be clever, but they are not wise. Understood. Enlighten me, father. Old people with sunburn, lapry. Hmm. Enlighten me. Evil laughing man are amongst the greatest one. Hmm. I've got quite a lot to think about. Goodbye, little daughter. See you later, father. Only priestesses are allowed to get water from the well. Up to now, my mother hasn't tried to make me into a priestess. If I'm lucky, she never will. This symbol's on the bottom of the mirror bowl in the garden. No idea what it means. That's mother's area of expertise. I can blame mother for a lot of things, but not laziness. On the contrary, she does the same work as three people put together, because she doesn't trust anyone to do it as well. Mother? Yes, Ivadora. Those symbols on the columns, what do they mean? First your insights concerning your wedding and now an interest in the spiritual. You do surprise me. I've not yet consented to marrying the prince. I will, however, take a look at him. Nothing more. Hmm. The three symbols depict the three different forms that water takes. They are important in many rituals. Water that falls from the sky. Water that springs from the earth and water that is bathed by moonlight. Oh. What's all this diff- Not all water is the same. It changes. If it bubbles out of a spring, then it is spring water. Then it turns into stream water, perhaps into river water, and then sometimes later into sea water. The voice of water changes. It's so. And if different forms of water are mixed together... Then you can create water with powerful magical properties. But it's not as easy as you might imagine. Water is constantly changing its form. Rain is water from the sky, but as soon as it lands in a puddle, then it becomes common puddle water. Do you really think that I look fat? You aren't really fat, my darling, but you aren't perfect either. Do I have to be perfect? No one is perfect, but that doesn't stop us striving for it. Once you are happy with yourself, then you become overindulgent. Dissatisfaction can take you far, my darling. Why do you want me to marry this particular prince? Because I think that will be best for you. And if I don't like him? Then you will learn to love him. Why can't I fall in love first and then marry? And what happens if you don't fall in love? You won't ever marry then? Don't be childish, Ivadora. When you married father, how long had you known each other? <laughs> Just a few days. I fell in love with him instantly. He was the wisest and most handsome elf that I had ever met. And if you hadn't loved him, or if perhaps you hadn't even liked him? Then I would have married him anyway. It is the duty of the princess to secure royal succession. Whether she wants it or not? You didn't want to go to school either. Today you can play music, paint, speak a dozen different languages and have realised what a gift education is. Please, just trust me. Sometimes only parents know what's best. Do you know what can be done to fight the epidemic in Seastone? Done? Nothing, my darling. It's a matter for humans. We will only observe. How hard would it be for us to actually help solve a problem for once, instead of waiting for it to solve itself? 
If Alistair needs my advice, he can ask me, and up to now he has not done that. But... I'm not going to interfere. Is there anything else I can do for you? Hmm. <sighs> See you later, Mother. Don't pull a face like a wilted willow, Ivo. Smile. If that isn't water bathed by moonshine, then I don't know what is. The only problem is, Mother guards this water like treasure and stands directly next to it. There appears to be an amazing collection of stuff accumulated in the little pond. I wonder if there's anything there that could prove useful. The spring brook emerges up there. It's still small here, but it becomes one of the largest and most important rivers in the woodland realm. That's just what I need. Right then, fresh water for the bird bath. If I do succeed in escaping, it'll be a while before Chief is able to bathe in his basin again. Do I have the right to drag him into this? He should really have the choice of returning as soon as I escape. Water from the waterfall. One could also say, water that has fallen from the sky. It works! One of the symbols is glowing. You're having a good time, I see. What can I do for you? I just need to borrow your spade a moment, is that okay? Of course! Absence makes the heart grow fonder. You shouldn't smoke. Mm hmm. Why not? It's not healthy. No lungs, no problems. Don't you think it's a bit weird and warped to smoke yourself? Yeah, I know. I'm terrible. <laughs> Don't tell no one, though. Arbor, I'm going to have to leave the elf burrow for a few days. Ah, your mother giving you permission? Mm, not as such. Oh, she not gonna like that. But one has to do what one has to do. I wish you a good journey. Oh, thank you, Arbor. And don't tell anyone I told you. Oh, he wouldn't dream of it. Just don't you go staying away too long now. You know time out there runs much quicker than here in the woodland realm. Of course. In the outside world, we elves age like humans. That's why most elves avoid it like the plague. Quite right. 
Tell me, you know a bit about nature, don't you? How does this child-bearing stuff work exactly? Oh, don't know. Ask myself the same question. The bees pollinate the flowers. The flower seeds are carried away by the wind and new plants grow. Very simple and easy, that. But elves, humans and dwarves don't produce nectar. What have you got to offer the bees? Yeah, and also our children don't grow in the earth. They grow in us. I know. Isn't it absurd? I need a special sort of water arbor. Can you help me? A special sort of water? Now who's been dreaming that stuff up then? Arbor, please help. I need water that spills out of the ground. There, the waterfall. As much water as you want. Well, it's not that simple. That water's changed. I need water directly out of the earth. You elves always like to make things complicated, don't you? You got a container? There you go. And don't start telling me that this is some kind of snot water or the like. This be tip-top quality groundwater. Should work. Thank you. I have to get on. Don't work too hard. Arp, that I won't. Let's hope that Arba's donation of water that spills from the earth will work. It hasn't really spilled from the earth, but it is groundwater, and it's never seen the sun. Aha! That's got the second symbol to glow. That's a weeping willow. If that isn't water bathed by moonshine, then I don't know what is. The only problem is, Mother guards this water like treasure and stands directly next to it. I will only deploy this flower in self-defence, or when it could prove amusing. Pa? Yes, Poppet? I've got quite a lot to think about. Goodbye, little daughter. See you later, father.
Hey, cheap. Think, cheap, cheap. How can we both get to sea stone without me having to grow wings? You've got an idea? A flight magazine? You've taken out a subscription to a flight magazine. Yeah, all right, all right. Page 15. Hmm. Hippogriff stud Aculeus in the Blue Mountains. The best battle and hunting hippogriffs in Avantasia. A hippogriff. That could carry me. Not a bad idea, cheap. But the Blue Mountains aren't close. And just look at the price. A pot of gold. Now where are we meant to get that from? <sighs> yes, I think you're right. We'll have to think of something. Do you think I could play the princess card and ask the stud to loan us a hippogriff? That would cost a lot less than a pot of gold. Yeah, you're right. They'd blab to everyone. Bad idea if I want to travel incognito. Do you think I could play the... Yeah, you're... I'm really sorry about that business with the musical box, Cheap, but I had to find out what was wrong with me. Are we friends again? Good. Sometimes I wish I'd kept the artifact of divine fate. Well, an object that would make every wish come true. It'd be very handy right now. Yes, I know, too much power for one person. That's why Archmage Alistair and I made arrangements. This sex that you spoke about, what is it and, and why should I not have it? I know that I'm an elf princess, that's exactly the reason I should have something like this. Perhaps even two. Oh, I will find out what you're trying to hide from me. I've got sunflower seeds. Want one? I can imagine the whole experience has made you hungry. Me too, but I can't help that. We will get through this together, right? I'll be back soon, cheap. Hi. Well, what's up? You were interrupted just now, when you were going to tell me about sex. Indeed. Someone is of the opinion that a princess does not need to know about such things. Oh, come on, tell me. I could tell you a lot about it, but it would be unwise for me to annoy your parents. They could burn me, or even worse, give me to a public library. How do elf pregnancies progress? They are very similar to human pregnancies, only they take a lot longer, about four years. You are presumably in the sixth month. And if I go into the world of humans to talk to the Archmage, a time in the human world passes quicker. Hmm, then your pregnancy will go faster, that's for certain. The consequences are difficult to predict. I am not aware of an elf ever having a child outside of the woodland realm. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. If everything goes to plan, then I'll be back in a couple of days and we'll know what's happened. That would be advisable. Pregnancy can play havoc with the body and mind. It does not take a lot of imagination to work out what a turbo pregnancy in the human world would do to an elf. Thank you for your help. That's what I'm here for. Hmm. 
these earrings here. They're sparkling and glinting in the sunshine. They could actually come in handy. I don't know how Cheap Cheap escaped the music box, but he does say he knows various mystical fighting techniques. That looks promising. The worms provide a great lure and should increase my fishing success rate, whatever that is. I always... got what I need, but this is so much fun. And perhaps I'll have a bit of luck catching other interesting things in the pond. A classic! The worms provide a great lure and should... I always... Mother? Yes, Ivadora. That stuff in the moon well. That's water bathed by moonlight, isn't it? Of course it is, my darling. Could I take some of it? 
It is holy water. We only use it for special occasions. What do you need it for? I'd like to carry out a ritual. I need some water that has been bathed by the moonlight for it. Really? What sort of ritual? I want to become one with the cosmos and nature and um, uh, to see the future and the past. So do the things that you do. But child, you'll need centuries of training for that. Only priestesses can use Moonwell water for spiritual journeys. About the moon water, what do you need? I need it for... Really? I just think that one could sell water with lots of bubbles in it for much more money than pure water. <laughs> what a strange idea! But why don't you just take normal water? Anyone falling for that will never know the difference. About the... What do you need it? I need it for a potion. Really? Well, the moon waters are particularly pure and clean water. I thought that it could form the basis of a beauty potion. Hmm. It is true that this water is purported to have healing powers. I didn't want to trouble you with this, but then I thought, if I'm meant to be looking my best for the prince, then such a potion wouldn't do any harm. Oh, absolutely. Do you have a vessel? May the Moonwell water give you the help you need to become more beautiful, just as it has always helped me. I could do with a bit more moon water, please. Hmm, yes, you do still look a bit peaky. Come back if you need any more. We'll get rid of those little wrinkles. See you later, Mother. Don't pull a face like a wilted willow, Ivo. Smile. Right, now water that has been bathed in moonshine. That must mean the water that's come from the moon well. Now all the symbols are glowing. Hello, are you there? I'm always there. I cast a spell over you single-handedly with no help. Uh, you had help, you just didn't realise it. I... no. I did it by myself. I was 